Well, there Andrew is with the seeing eye dog tips that they would bring into the hospital for kids who were suffering with blindness. You see, when Andrew woke up, he was blind. He was unable to see. But faith still kicked in, and after a couple of days, he saw a little teeny weeny light. Just a little teeny weeny light, and it was just enough. Andrew's vision is like this. If you were to close your right eye, he's totally blind in the right. If you were to put your hand over part of your left, he's totally blind in the left peripheral. He only sees, it's like looking through a little bitty straw, but it's just enough. And we learned some huge lessons from that. When Andrew was time for him to go back to school, he had to use a cane. He was very afraid. His life had changed. My life had changed. It was tough. And you know what's amazing and makes me angrier than anything? When he went back to school, little kids would tease him. Hey, blind boy, want to play stickball? What is that? I, I couldn't believe that he had to endure that. So the emotional scars were far worse than anything physical. But we had to learn how to play through the foul. He came to me and he said, Mom, feeling really, really bad. Is there anything worse than losing your sight? And I said, yes, my son, losing your vision. And in the way that he usually looks at me like, Mom, I don't know anything. She'd be making up stuff. Oh, my God. I don't make a sight vision. I said, there's a difference. Stick with me. I do know something. You see, sight is physical. Vision is spiritual. Every last one of you has a vision for something. And we're all different. We're all different. Something has been placed inside of you spiritually to say, this is your purpose in life. And you're all busy trying to figure it out, but you have it. Sight is very, very tangible. We, we, we tend to trust that a lot. I have to be honest. I have to choose between my sight and my vision. I'm going to trust that vision. I'm just going to trust that vision because I know where it comes from. So Andrew's situation was like this. The way I see it, everyone said, oh, this is horrible. He's, he's legally blind. Like, how can you be illegally blind? Just the question. Could be me. <laughs> You're bumping into people. Come with me. <laughs> anyway, so he's legally blind. And everyone said this is going to be so hard for him. And it was. He would go into restaurants and he would bump into people and he would get very, very upset. And it was hard because he couldn't see the things that we take for granted out here. And I said, let's flip this thing. Let's stop worrying so much about what you can't see. Let's, that's a beautiful thing. See, Andrew, you have no peripheral distractions. See, in life, we have a goal, just like a basketball goal, that we need to focus on. But we're too busy concerned about the worry and the doubt that we won't move ahead. Another example is, because Andrew was so fearful, and we, I didn't know anything about sighted guide and using a cane. I had to learn as I went along, but I was a basketball coach. So the basketball coach and me kicked in. I said, all right, we're going to knock this in the butt. We're not doing that fear thing. We're not doing that. I don't want to go. We're not doing that. That's what doing. <laughs> I took him to the most congested place I could find. Downtown New York City, Manhattan. Fashion app. <laughs> and this is what we're going to do. You're going to walk, Mommy, please. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm afraid. No, you're not. Get your cane, and you're going to walk. But where are people if I bump into people? Well, if you bump into you get that cane, and you look straight ahead, and you just get to swing your hand. <laughs> fear. Sometimes you got to go through a really tough, tough place to gain the courage to move ahead. 